In the last lecture, we learned about some route constraints like int, alpha, date time, etc. So these are the data types which we can assign for a route parameter. Now let's continue that lecture and let's learn about some more route constraints which we can use on a route parameter. Here I have opened the routing documentation from Microsoft and here it is talking about route constraints. So if I scroll down, we have already talked about these route constraints. So int, pool, date, time, decimal, double, float, GUID, long, etc. So these are basically the types which we can assign to a route parameter. Apart from these types, we also have route constraints like min length, max length and length. So let's talk about these route constraints now. So we can use min length when we want to specify the minimum number of characters which we want to get for our route parameter. Let's understand this with an example. So let's say for the author name, we only want to get some text value. For that, we have specified this route constraint alpha. And for the author name, the minimum character in the author name should be 3 and the maximum character in the author name, let's say, should be 16. To specify that, we can use another route constraint and to specify another route constraint, we can again use a colon and then we can specify the next route constraint. So here we want to use this route constraint min length. So the minimum length for the author name we want should be 4. And then I want to specify another route constraint, let's say max length. So for the author name, the maximum length, the maximum number of characters which we want in the author name, let's say is 16. Let's specify that here. So if we run this application now, and here we are in the root URL, let's go ahead and let's type the route path there. So we want to go to books slash author, and there we want to specify the author name. So let's say the author name is JS. If you notice here, I am specifying an author name with only two characters in it. So if I go ahead and if I try to access this URL, you can notice that the default endpoint has been executed. Basically, this endpoint has been executed here. This middleware function has been executed. That's because here we have specified that the author name should be a text. So for that, we are specifying this route constraint alpha and the minimum number of characters in the author name should be four. But in the browser, in the URL, we have only specified two characters in the author name. And that's why this route pattern did not match. And because of that, this middleware function or this endpoint did not get called. Instead, the default middleware function the default endpoint that has been executed okay but instead of two characters if i specify let's say john so now in the author name we have four characters so this is the minimum number of characters which we want for the author name right so now if i go ahead and if i press enter you will see that we have this response following are the list of books authored by john so now this pattern is matching because now for the author name, we have minimum of four characters. So now this pattern is matching. And because of that, this middleware function is getting called. This endpoint is getting executed. Okay. In the same way, if we specify an author name, which has more than 16 characters, in that case also, this middleware function will not get executed because in that case, again, this pattern will not match. So in that case also, this default middleware function, this default endpoint will be called. Now, just for testing purpose, instead of 16, I am going to specify maybe 8. Okay. And let's do the hot reload. And now in the URL, let's try to specify an author name, which has more than eight characters. Maybe let's say John Smith. If I press enter, you will notice that again, the default route has been executed. But if we have eight characters or less than eight characters, so instead of John Smith, if I say John Smith and if I press enter, in that case, you will see that we have this response following are the list of books authored by John Smith. That means here, this endpoint has been executed. All right. Now we can combine this min length and max length together 
by using another route constraint which is called as length and there we can specify the range so here let's say we want minimum number of four characters in the author name and maximum of eight characters in the author name okay so here we are combining min length and max length using this length route constraint let's save the changes let's restart this application and let's try it out so again i will say root url slash books slash author slash let's say js if i press enter you will notice that the default endpoint is executed here if i say john smith so here we have total nine characters in the author name so this time also the default endpoint should be executed as you can see but instead of john smith if i say john smith so now in the author name we have only eight characters if I press enter, now the proper endpoint is being executed. Okay, in the same way, if we have, let's say, five characters in the author name, then also the proper endpoint should be executed. Okay, so I hope now the use of min length, max length, and this length constraint is clear to you. Now, if you see, we also have another length constraint where it is expecting only one argument. So let's try to understand this. Using this length constraint where we are passing two arguments, there we specify the range of the characters which we want in the given route parameter. For example, in the author name route parameter, we use this length constraint to specify that in the author name we want minimum of four characters and maximum of eight characters. But let's say in the author name we want exactly eight characters, no less than that, no more than that. In that case, we can use this length constraint where we are passing only one argument. Let's see that. Let's go to Visual Studio again. And here, instead of specifying a range, let me go ahead and let me specify a value, a single value, let's say 8. So now, for the author name, we need to have exactly 8 characters. Okay, let's actually test it out. Let's run this application. Let's type the route URL. So it is books slash author. And now we need to specify the author name. So in the author name, if I say John and if I press enter, you will notice that the default route has been executed because this message is coming from the default route. If I say John Smith, now in the author name, we have nine characters. If I press enter here also, the default route is executed. But if I say John Smith, now it has exactly eight characters. So if I go ahead and press enter now, the respective route handler function has been executed here the respective endpoint has been executed here but if i say john let's say smi so now it has only seven characters in the author name this time also the default route should be called as you can see so using this length constraint we can specify the exact number of characters which we want for a given route parameter then we also have this min and max constraint now, this min and max constraint can be used on a route parameter of type integer. And there, using this min and max constraint, we can specify what is the minimum number of value we are expecting for that particular route parameter and what is the maximum number of value we are expecting for that particular route parameter. For example, if we go to our first route, there this ID is of type integer. So we are specifying that using this int constraint. Now, here, for the ID, the minimum value of this ID route parameter should be 10. So that I can specify using min constant. And there I can specify the value as 10. And the maximum number of value which this ID parameter can take, it should be let's say 1000. So for that I can use this max constant. And there I can specify that value, let's say 1000. So now to this ID parameter, the minimum value which we can assign to it is 10 and the maximum value which we can assign to it is 1000. If we try to assign it a value less than 10, let's say 8, in that case, this URL pattern will not match and this endpoint will be not executed. In the same way, if we try to assign this ID parameter with a value which is greater than 1000, in that case also, this route pattern will not match and this middleware function, this endpoint will not get executed. So now to this ID route parameter, we can assign only those values which is greater than or equal to 10 and which is less than or equal to 1000. Let's test it out. 
So let's run this application and let's type the URL. So it is root URL slash products and then let's specify the value for ID, let's say eight. If I press enter, you will notice that the default route has been executed here because here the value which we are passing for the ID parameter, it is less than 10. If I pass 10 here, in that case, the given endpoint will be executed. So here we can see this response. This is product with ID 10. So it is working as expected. If I pass 100 and then if I press enter, in that case also it is working as expected. If I pass 1000, in that case also it is working as expected. But if I pass 1001 here instead of 1000, so now this 1001 is greater than 1000, right? So in that case, the default route should be called. The default endpoint should be executed. Okay, so using this min and max constraint, we can specify the minimum and maximum integer value for a route parameter which it can expect. Now, we can also combine this min and max by using another route constraint which is range. Okay, and here we can specify a range of value, for example, 1 and 1000. So, using this range constraint, we are specifying that for this id route parameter we can assign the minimum value of 1 let's actually make it 10 so using this range constraint we are specifying that for this id route parameter we can assign it with a minimum value of 10 and a maximum value of 1000 any value which is out of this range that means any value which is less than 10 or greater than 1000 cannot be assigned to this id route parameter if we go ahead and if we run this application again, for that I will click on this restart button. Let's again go ahead and let's type the URL path which is slash products and slash let's say we pass 10 here. So in this case, the proper endpoint will be executed. But if I pass 8 here, which is less than 10, in that case, the default endpoint will be executed. In the same way, if I pass 1000 here, or any value which is less than 1000 in that case the proper endpoint will be called but if i pass a value which is greater than 1000 maybe 1010 and now if we press enter the default route has been executed all right so here we talked about this range route constraint we have already talked about this alpha route constraint in our previous lecture then we have this regular expression which we are going to talk about in our next lecture and we also have this required route constraint and we will also talk about this constraint when required. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.